This is yet more of the data basics lecture, uh, long ongoing lecture series here actually. Not just a single lecture, but lots of lectures. And in this lecture we're going to talk about measures of center. Sometimes this is called central tendency, sometimes these are just called averages, and other a few other measures of location. We're going to revisit the issue of quartiles briefly so you remember what those are. So the, uh, let's get down here, the um, learning objectives for this are to learn to calculate and interpret measures of center, including the mode, the median, and quartiles, the mean. We're just really going to talk about the mode here. The mode is super, super simple, but we're going to talk about center first and why we bother with this. Often we want, with a bunch of values, to represent something about those values, something about the typicalness of what's a typical number in those, in the, among all those numbers. And we want to represent that with a single number, the typical case. A typical case tends to be a middle case. And this is an important little thing to remember. Typical equals middle. And this is much like representative democracy. So you want, uh, or often, Americans want to represent, or to elect somebody to office who looks like they do, who acts like they do, who has their thoughts and their attitudes. So you want someone who represents you. So you want your city councilor to represent your neighborhood. You want him to understand and be like you. You want your governor to be somebody who grew up in the state. You want her to be as strong and confident like all New Yorkers are, etc. So statistics loves Joe the plumber. It loves the average. So here's a basic principle. The typical observation in any group of data is a middle score. Now it doesn't help as much as you might think because there are many kinds of middles, but let's talk about those kinds of middles. If you combine that with uh, the nature of the data determines the treatment of the data, you'll figure out that sometimes you should use one middle score and sometimes you should use another. One measure of center, sometimes another. So Neanderthal statistics, um, the mode. This is an easy, easy center. It's also not very useful most of the time. It's kind of a dumb statistic sometimes. But sometimes it's useful. It's the most common observation. It's the most common number, the most common score in a set of numbers. How do you find it? Well, if you have a frequency table, you just calculate the frequency for all categories, and whichever category has the highest frequency wins. If you don't have a frequency table, um, you just find what's the most commonly reoccurring number here. But with a frequency table it's easy, just look for the highest frequency. In a histogram or a stem plot or a stacked dot plot or anything like that, you can just look for the high point. The problem is there could be multiple high points and uh, that's one of the problems with the mode is that you can get multiple answers and which leaves us in a weird mathematical place. So find the mode of 24 students time to graduation in years. Well, let's break this down. You've got two threes, one, two, three, four, five. You've got five fours. Uh, you've got one, two, you've only got three fives, so that's not it. One, two, three, four, five, six sixes, so that's it. Six is the mode. Six is the most common number. So the modal time to graduation is six years. So it can be useful sometimes, but not that much. We're not going to use it much. Um, it doesn't tell us very much. It's based on only a very small number of values. It's mathematically pretty unpredictable. You can have lots of modes or zero modes. Uh, and you can have really flaky things influencing what your mode is. And you don't want unpredictable, silly things influencing your measures of center. So we tend to prefer the mean. The mean is much nicer for us. And, and if we can't use the mean, we prefer the median. If the data are, for instance, highly skewed or have some extreme values to them.